Hey guys, vegan cyclist here. So I want to talk about failure in cycling and how to deal with it, right? Because uh, you're going to deal, you're going to, you're going to come across failure way more than you're going to come across success. That's just the fact of the game. Okay. So let's talk about this, how to deal with failure. So like the past three weeks for me have been really, really difficult because my training has been on par, my nutrition has been on par, my fitness has never been better, and we go to the races and we don't win. And that's really difficult. Uh, we go to Watsonville and I just slay myself. I did a whole video on that and my sprinter gets fourth. And that's a little bit frustrating, but okay, move on to the next race. San Rafael, biggest night that I'm ever going to have as a cyclist. I mean, that's the biggest race that I'm gonna go to and uh, just finishing it is phenomenal. I did finish it, it was really, really exciting, but in the, the last two laps, I was top 20, top 30, which is just crazy because there's like national champions, there's like state champions. I mean, there's guys from all over the world. It's crazy how packed this race is. It's just, uh, uh, but so in the last like, two laps um, I got uh, one of the lead out guys was falling back through the pack and he bumped me off the course and you know at speeds of 35 miles an hour like in this tight little crit you're not gonna be able to get back uh, really into a good spot so I ended up going from basically like you know top 20 top 30 all the way back to like 50th and it's like ah that's so frustrating because I was gonna do so well so then we go to Berkeley and uh, that was the hardest race I've ever done. Uh, I initiated a break, that was awesome, but the guys didn't wanna work, so then it gets countered and my teammate goes with it, but then when that gets countered, uh, our team, our third teammate did not make that move. So there was a huge split, right? It wasn't just like a break, it was like a split. And a lot of the team, uh, team guys in the backpack and the second group had represented, you know, in the front group. So they weren't really gonna help. So my sprinter, you know, I mean, we've traveled really long ways to, to do this race. So I just completely destroy myself to help bridge this, uh, this split. That split basically happened like 10 minutes into the race or so. And so it was about 50 minutes because we caught the bridge or we caught the break at, with like two laps to go. But I, I have never rode harder in my entire life. I went so deep to a deep, deep, dark place just for my sprinter. I'm giving everything I have for this guy right? We make the bridge. He says he's feeling good. I kind of move up in front to like help him at all, but I'm smashed. And then someone wrecks or has a flat tire. He gets kicked off the course and drops his chain. And it's like, shit, man, I, I, everything I've been doing is for, you know, this moment, right? Like being able to be here and, and I sacrifice my race for him. And then he's not even in the race and it's not his fault. Right. But it's just now what? Like, I don't, I don't, I can't content contest this sprint you know what i mean i'm destroyed i mean that was his job so it's like man so then it's like okay you know what let's just uh let's just regroup and move on to the next race which was um in monterey at the uh seaside circuit and in the two threes we could not have raced better as a team it was amazing it was just like kind of that watsonville video i did where it was one of us was always off the front it was me and this guy Chaz and then Tony our sprinter just stayed in the pack like all you had to do is mark like two guys' wheels and so Chaz was off the front I was off the front Chaz off the front I was off the front and we forced the two strongest guys in that group to just constantly do work so I mean it was it was flawless and then our guy Chaz is off the front and uh, and he, he's gonna win the race um, or our sprinter is going to win the race. Like that's pretty much what it comes down to. Our, uh, our guy Chaz gets caught with about 200 meters to go. Like he was so close. Um, but I start ramping it up and I get my sprinter into great positioning and his derailleur just blows up. <laughs> And then he like kind of swerved and then hit a guy and a guy hits me. And the whole, the whole peloton almost just wrecks in the last like 100 meters. And it's like, like, oh my God, you know what I mean? Like I had the best legs I've ever had for this race. 
and we don't get the win. All right, so what do you do at this point, right? What do you, how do you not just lose your shit and be like, oh, I fucking give up, you know? I'm doing everything right and I'm not getting the results that I want. How do you, how do you keep motivation, you know? How do you, how do you keep, how do you find silver lining in this, you know? And it doesn't have to just be for racing, right? Like, it, just as a basic cyclist that doesn't, has never raced, you know? You're gonna, you're gonna experience a lot of failure uh, in your, in your, time as a cyclist through either just training or getting dropped on a group ride, you know, or not being where you want to be or like just mental failures, like not getting out of bed to go ride, you know, on the Saturday, you're like, yeah, I'm going to go ride. And then you just kind of let the little demons talk you out of, man, I'm just going to sit on the couch. And then you feel horrible, right? If you don't feel good because you, you kind of succumb to that. But you really got to keep this in mind, okay? This is like number one, is that your progression as a cyclist through fitness is not linear, does not look like this, okay? It looks like a, a jagged staircase, right? It is, you got hills and valleys and, and if you have a really good training program, you can kind of like gauge um, and anticipate when these peaks and valleys are, are coming. But even with the best training program, you're still gonna have times where you think you should be doing better, but you know, you're not, or you're not able to put out the numbers that you want, um, or whatever. I mean, it, you just got to remember this is the, the progression is going to be kind of weird, right? You're, you're going to maybe be stronger than you've ever been one day and weaker than you've ever been another day. You just got to make sure that you're kind of trending up, right? That the, that the trend is, is towards, uh, something better and, and, and not that you're trending downwards. So when you do experience these failures in cycling, what you need to do is try to find some kind of silver lining, find something that you learn from it. If you get dropped on the group ride, like, you know, can you, can you identify maybe why it is that you got dropped, you know, trying to figure out uh, some of the variables that caused that to happen. And if you can learn from that, then it takes it from being a failure to a success. I, I used to do a lot of street bike racing and someone told me like, um, every time you come on the track, learn one thing. And that's maybe easier said than done. But you know, if you have that mentality of like, okay, so you, uh, you don't get out of bed and you don't go on that ride and you feel like crap instead of just beating yourself up about it and then being like, well, I guess I won't go ride tomorrow because I didn't ride today, you know, and it kind of just starts to snowball. Just try to be like, okay, well, what, what, what happened? What mentally was going on that I, um, sir came to the little demons that said I should sleep in or, or that I shouldn't go out and ride and try to analyze that and figure out if there's a way that you can prevent that in the future or use, use that failure to motivate yourself next time, right? Say, well, I'm not going to sleep in this time, right? I am going to find a way to go and ride because that's what I want to do. Looking at the big picture will also really, really help you deal with these failures, right? If you kind of put that out over a long period of time and uh, and say like maybe maybe you have a really bad training ride right it just sucks it, you you try to do intervals and they you failed or you try to climb a, a hill and you didn't or you try to do a century and you pulled out you know think about where you're going to be a year from now or two years from now or three years from now right kind of say like okay today was bad but uh that won't happen next year right that won't happen two years from now I'm gonna train harder, I'm gonna train better, I'm gonna do something different so that this isn't gonna happen again. And as a racer, dealing with failures, you, you cannot have that failure in your mind going into the next race. Like when you have that failure, you have to, it has to be done with, right? Like the second it happens. So my teammate's uh, derailleur blows into pieces and it's super frustrating because I did everything I could for him and, and, and then he can't deliver because of his bike, something out of his control. By the time I'm back to my car, I'm done with it. I'm over it. Okay. Forget about it. Just move on. Right. It's just, a, it's just a race, whatever. You know what I mean? I'll have more races in the future. Another huge tip kind of more towards racers is do multiple races, sign up for two races if you can, because I know for me, having that pressure off of me of like, if I make a wrong move right now, that's my race. You know, like having the pressure of off of just being like, well, if I fuck this one up, I've got another race, you know? So uh, that helps me out a lot. 
And, and one last for sure tip is to not compare yourself to someone else. And this has been a huge uh, struggle for me as a cyclist where I'll see other guys and it's like, I've been training really hard for five years. And then I see some guy and he's only been on the bike for one year and he's just blowing my doors off. And it's like, oh my goodness, that's so frustrating. Uh, you know, but I just can't compare myself to him. You know, everyone's a little bit different. Everyone's uh, biology is different and their strengths and weaknesses are different. So um, just, you know, figure out, figure out what's good for you. Find, find happiness and, and, uh, and positivity in every situation that you can and your cycling career or your hobby will become way more fruitful and you'll be way happier even when you are faced with these moments of failure and just complete devastation and, and having a hard time finding yourself getting motivated to go out when you kind of feel like what's the point. But uh, don't worry about that small stuff. Don't sweat that small stuff. Let's all just have fun. Let's get strong. Let's stay healthy. Guys, vegan cyclist, watch all my other stuff. Thank you so much. And to the three guys that recognized me out at that race, dude, you made my life, right? I could not believe that I'm like signing up, registering for a race, and I had someone be like, hey, you're a vegan cyclist. It's like, whoa, someone recognized me. I'm famous. Ah, like that was super cool. So uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for all the support. I'm over a thousand subscribers. What? That's crazy. So guys, thank you so much. Vegan Cyclist, yo. Yeah.